welcome back to Braintree Today. I'm Martha Constantinidis and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. As conditions have worsened in a number of key Ukrainian cities, the UN announced that more than 1.5 million people have fled the country thus far. The European Union was advised by an EU representative to expect more than 5 million refugees. On Monday morning, there were reports of heavy fighting in a broad area northwest of Kyiv. In a statement on Sunday, the UN said over 360 civilians have been killed in Ukraine since the invasion began on February 24th. A total of 1,123 have been injured, which includes the 364 deaths and 759 injured. The statement acknowledged that the real figures are likely considerably higher. Ukraine and Russia were scheduled to hold a third round of talks on Monday at 4 p.m. Ukraine time and 9 a.m. Eastern time. Family and friends of WNBA star Brittany Griner are demanding the basketball star's release after she was detained in Russia on drug charges. Griner, 31, is a two-time Olympic gold medalist and a player for the Phoenix Mercuries. She spends her off-seasons playing for the Russian team UMMC Ekaterinburg. It is currently unclear exactly when Griner was detained and her whereabouts since the detention. Russia's Customs Service reported a criminal case has been opened against the WNBA star. While there are currently no other reported charges against Griner, there is a possibility that the star is subject to other charges due to Russia's LGBTQ laws. So far, more than 700 people have signed the Secure Brittany Griner Swift and Safe Return to the U.S. petition on Change.org. According to the Baker administration, several Stop the Spread COVID-19 testing sites around the state will shut down because of a significant decline in demand and availability of home antigen tests. As of April 1st, only 11 sites will remain open in Everett, Framingham, Lawrence, Lynn, New Bedford, Randolph, Revere, Springfield, and Worcester. The PCR tests at these locations will remain free to any Massachusetts resident with no insurance or ID necessary. The administration said the remaining sites were determined based on need, the volume of daily testing, and geographic equity. From January 20th through February 16th, the 11 remaining sites accounted for nearly 72% of all Stop the Spread testing volume. These sites will continue to operate through at least May 15th, 2022. In the DPH's weekly report, Braintree's COVID-19 metrics continue to improve. The town's positive test, positive test rate decreased from 3.1 to 2.4. In the last 14 days, Braintree has seen 68 new cases or 12.2 cases daily per 100,000 residents. This is down from the week prior where the town saw 17.1 daily cases. The state also reported that Braintree has 78.9% of its residents fully vaccinated and 45% are boosted. The state has also seen a decline in overall cases with the positivity rate hitting 1.8% statewide. The state is still monitoring and reporting health trends. On Friday, over 56,000 molecular tests were conducted and 900 new positive cases were reported. Currently, 345 people are hospitalized in Massachusetts and 62 are in the ICU. 23 new deaths were also reported. This report does not include numbers from over the weekend. The town of Branchy will also continue to monitor COVID data from the state. In the last week, Braintree Town Hall reported 19 new COVID-19 cases. The Town Hall website currently shows 9,468 positive cases in total. There have been no new fatalities reported in 10 months, keeping Braintree's total deaths at 136. Thanks for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more after the break.
Welcome back. Braintree Mayor Kokoris will deliver his annual State of the Town on Wednesday, March 9th at 6 p.m. in the Cahill Auditorium at Town Hall. You can watch the State of the Town speech live on BCAM TV, Comcast Channel 8, and Verizon Channel 26. You can also stream it on BCAM's YouTube channel. Kandidermeister is showing support for those in Ukraine through the sale of special cupcakes that feature a blue and yellow heart on top reflecting the country's flag. The local bakery in Braintree is donating all proceeds from these cupcakes to the Save the Children Foundation. Even though it has only been two days since the bakery started making the special cupcakes, it has already sold hundreds. Be sure to visit Kandidermeister for a delicious cupcake and to show your support. Amazon has announced that it is, it is closing all of its brick-and-mortar bookstores and four-star shops nationwide, which includes four Massachusetts locations. Amazon said that the move will enable it to concentrate its efforts on its grocery stores, such as Amazon Fresh, Whole Foods Market, and its convenience concept called Amazon Go, along with its upcoming Amazon-style stores. Amazon has at least two grocery stores under construction in Massachusetts, one in Saugus and another here in Braintree. The construction of an Amazon Fresh grocery store off Route 3 is underway. These closures come as Amazon.com's overall revenue growth is slowing and it's looking for new ways to reignite sales. Managing Director of Global Data Retail Neil Saunders said the strategy comes as a surprise. He said he believes it's an acknowledgement that the bookstores weren't delivering the returns Amazon was looking for. Here are some important dates for Braintree residents to keep in mind for recycling the weeks of April 18th through the 25th and the weeks of May 2nd, 9th, 16th and the 23rd are for curbside yard waste. Then on Saturday, April 30th from 9 a.m. to noon, the household hazardous waste drop-off will be open. Also, the compost site drop-off is open. Remember, trash stickers are required. And for electronics drop-off, you can call Braintree Rotary for date and information at 781-917-4765. Thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area. The COVID vaccine is free and highly effective. Most vaccines require two shots, given three to four weeks apart to fully protect you. So be sure to get both. The vaccine is an important tool to protect you, your family, and your friends. Learn more. Welcome back to Braintree Today. Now let's get right into stories around Massachusetts and the South Shore. Last Friday, the Supreme Court reinstated the death penalty for convicted Boston Marathon bomber Zokar Tsarnaev. In the 6-3 ruling, the High Court said that a lower federal court had provided him a fair trial despite the national media frenzy that surrounded the case. Tsarnaev received a death sentence in 2015. In a closely watched case this term, the Biden administration wanted to overturn an appeals court ruling that the trial judge was mistaken when he blocked a jury from considering evidence that Tsarnaev's older brother had been implicated in a triple murder years before the 2013 marathon attack. Tsarnaev's lawyers said the evidence was central to their effort to mitigate his sentence. Tsarnaev was convicted of dozens of crimes in the attack that killed three people and injured more than 260. The Tsarnaev brothers also shot and killed MIT police officer Sean Collier. Tamerlan Tsarnaev was killed in a shootout with police in a Boston suburb after the bombing. Biden has voiced his personal concerns about capital punishment and his administration imposed a moratorium on federal executions. Late Thursday night, a tanker full of gasoline was in the right lane of the northbound side of Interstate 93 in Stoneham when it slammed into the passenger side of Massachusetts State Police Trooper Tamar Bucci's cruiser. According to sources, the cruiser's blue lights were activated as Bucci was changing lanes sharply toward the right shoulder when the tanker slammed into the passenger side of the cruiser just before midnight. Massachusetts State Police Department Colonel Christopher Mason said Bucci was trying to pull over to help a motorist in a disabled vehicle. The force of the impact pushed the cruiser off the roadway. Two Good Samaritans pulled the trooper from the heavily damaged cruiser and a Stoneham police officer who was in the area performed CPR before Bucci was taken to Massachusetts General Hospital where she was pronounced dead. 
The driver of the tanker, which is owned by PJ Murphy Transportation Company, was not injured and is cooperating with police. Sources connected to the investigation said this appears to be a tragic crash and the driver of the tanker is devastated. The South Shore is showing support in many ways for the country of Ukraine with makeshift flags along with a blue and yellow billboard with the message Stand with Ukraine along Interstate 93 from Boston to Quincy. Some residents with family and friends in Ukraine say their communities have stepped up with meaningful shows of support such as Lori Costa Klein of Halifax, who runs Crazy Lady Cookies. Lori is donating her time and materials to raise money to donate to organizations helping in Ukraine by selling cookies in the shape of sunflowers, the Ukrainian national flower, along with yellow and blue hearts. For more information or to order, find Crazy Lady Cookies on Facebook. For other ways to help, Milton resident Natasha Minsky, originally from Kyiv, said donations can be sent directly through the Ukrainian National Bank. The organization Sunflower of Peace will also be using donations to buy medical backpacks that can assist 5 to 10 people each. Currently, the goal is to reach $5 million. Spring is on its way, but the road to warmer temps has many potholes, according to local DPW directors. Towns on the South Shore say their public works employees are dealing with a huge amount of potholes on the roads. Quincy's public works director Al Grazioso says, quote, we, we, like every other community, seem to be having a very bad pothole season. This year, you've seen the weather. It's been going from 70 degrees to freezing in the blink of an eye. We've been doing potholes pretty much all winter, end quote. The phenomenon is called pumping. If there are cracks in the pavement and water gets in, it freezes, thaws itself, and then freezes again and undermines the base of the roadway. Marshfield Public Works Director Tom Reynolds said, quote, The problem here is that we get that freeze, thaw, freeze, thaw. It's a constant battle in the winter to keep the holes filled, and that February and March are the worst for them, end quote. Stacker, a website that crunches data from public and private sources, found this year that Massachusetts has the fourth worst roads in the country when it comes to potholes. The only states that are worse are New York, Rhode Island, and Hawaii. Last week, Governor Charlie Baker filed a $2.4 billion spending bill that includes $100 million to help municipalities repair winter road damage. The Quincy Choral Society is having their annual Spring Pops concert and silent auction fundraiser on Sunday, March 13th. Doors open at 1.15 p.m. and the show begins at 2 p.m. Tickets are $15. You can attend this event located at the Quincy Catholic Academy at 370 Hancock Street in North Quincy. Be advised that masks are required and seats are limited due to social distancing. Thank you for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. The COVID-19 vaccine doesn't contain the virus, so you can't get COVID from the shot. You may experience things like muscle aches, fever, or tiredness, but these are most likely signs that your body is building immunity to protect against the virus. Learn more. Welcome back to Branchy Today. The 2022 Oscars are just around the corner and nominations were announced on February 8th. If you haven't taken a peek yet, here are some suggestions of the most overlooked portions in the three shorts categories, which includes animated, live action, and documentary. First up for animated shorts is Bestia, directed by Hugo Kovar Brubius. This stop-motion animation tells the story of Ingrid, who works for the Chilean intelligence agency. Her relationship with her dog, her body, her fears and frustrations reveal a grim fracture of her mind and of the whole country. The story is inspired by Ingrid Older, Older Rock, Dina agent during the Chilean military dictatorship. For more information on Bestia, you can visit bestia-shortfilm.com. Next up for live action shorts, The Long Goodbye, directed by Anil Caria, tells the story of an immigrant family in Britain preparing their home for a wedding celebration until a right-wing march spirals out of control and causes chaos to erupt. For more information on The Long Goodbye, you can visit anilcaria.com. And finally, for documentary shorts, Audible, directed by Matt Ogens, tells the story of football player Amory and his Maryland school. 
He and his deaf teammates attempt to defend their winning streak to prove they are just as good as any hearing team, while coming to terms with the tragic loss of a close friend who fell victim to suicide. You can watch Audible on Netflix. Oscar-nominated shorts will be available on VOD via iTunes, Amazon, Verizon, and Google Play beginning March 22nd. For more information and to find all the Oscar nominations, you can visit oscars.org along with shorts.tv slash the Oscar shorts. That's all we have for news today. Thank you for watching Braintree Today. I'm Martha Constantinides. Stay safe and we'll see you next time.